Hey guys, Middle Age Gamer here. We're playing Train Simulator 2014 again. Got another subscriber request that we're going to be going through today. And I actually just played it. We'll kind of talk about it here in a minute. But it's a career scenario. And it's going to be the London to Brighton route. The capital commuter career scenario. Using the class 377 EMU Southern. And it says drive the semi-fast service from Brighton to London, Victoria. Which is basically the full line. And it's about 60 minutes long, uh, medium difficulty, and uh, relatively easy. We'll go ahead and talk about a few things. Um, I played it just now thinking I'd go to one or two platforms, get used to the uh, locomotive itself. Ended up playing the whole scenario on accident. Anyways, we're going to take a look at Google Maps real quick so you can see um, where the route goes and get some more information. Then we'll get into the game here in a minute. Okay guys, so we're here in Google Maps as you can see, and we're doing the London to, or actually Brighton, the London route I should say, since we're starting off in Brighton. And uh, basically it's going to be in Europe, and of course United Kingdom. It's going to be uh, south of London, right on the coastline, and it's definitely known as uh, a destination spot or a day destination for people in London to come down for the day and uh, you know go to different restaurants and everything on the sea. It's also known to be uh, called Silicon Beach uh, similar to Silicon Valley because there's a lot of uh, new age tech and video developers and things of that nature down there. So anyways here's Brighton right here again on the south shore of England. Let's go ahead and zoom in and see if we can find a train station. There it is right there. So this is going to be the train station. Can't really see much because it, most of it's enclosed obviously. But if you follow the train tracks it basically follows this road here for the most part heading north. And let's see if I can scroll up here. And let me back out a little bit. So you can see Crawley there, and of course uh, Crowdon, or however you pronounce that, we stop at of course East Crowdon. And moving further north, let's go ahead and get in here to London. And this is where it crosses the river here as you're coming in. And this is the London Victoria station right here. And of course the Victoria tube stop or underground stations right here as well. So fairly easy access to that. Uh, I, I know I've been to Victoria station a few times. I'm not sure if I actually got to this train station. I know I've been to like the St. Pancras train station and maybe one or two others. I can't say for sure I've been to the London Victoria train station uh, yet or not. But anyways that's the Google map portion so you guys can see where the actual route is uh, for those aren't uh, for those who aren't familiar with the Brighton to London route. And uh, it's relatively realistic. It takes about 50 minutes in real life and it takes about 50 minutes in the game as well. So let's go ahead and get into the gameplay and move on forward. Alright, we got the game loaded up. It says, Good morning, driver. Today I'll be running a semi fast service from Brighton to London, Victoria. You'll be making several stops along the way. Make sure you don't miss any of them. Let's go ahead and get inside. And first thing you need to do is get to day running lights right there. And get the reverser forward. Turn off the AWS system. And be ready to go here in a minute. Go ahead and load up passengers real quick. Look at the board here real fast. Looks like we're running on DC power or the third rail power. Take a quick look outside. Yep, got the headlights on. You can see the uh, Brighton platform in the background or platforms. All right, let's go ahead and pull out of here.
and this locomotive does have cruise control which we'll go over here in a little bit Again, you want to go as fast as possible without going over the speed limit. And we have about six and three quarters of a mile to go to Hassocks, I believe is how you pronounce it. And I don't know much about Brighton. I'll probably uh, talk about it when I do the Google Maps part. As you guys know, I probably or usually record the Google Maps part after I actually do the route. So I'll probably talk a little bit about Brighton, but I do know it's a uh, major, you know, day destination from London. Um, you can always go to the beach, which is, uh, of course, south of London on the coastline. Let's go ahead and get up to 100% here. And something that is fairly helpful is, if you want to use it, is this little system right here. It's the cruise control system. You can basically set it where you want to on here. So and then hit the set button and it will not go over that speed. So we can hit 75, I'm going to go ahead and put it at 75, hit set, and it will not go above that amount for any reason. I'm going to take a look outside real quick, you can see the detailing out in the distance. Fairly long train, I believe was that about eight cars, and maybe ten cars. It actually looks like ten cars from here. Could go through and count it, but not too worried about it. A lot of things you can do in cab. Um, you got, of course, the sun screen, sun shields, whatever you want to call them. You can actually close this window too. Pretty neat. I think the more interactive the developers can make something, the better. If only I could get it off. There we go. Got it off. And you can actually pull down this window, too. So you can open and close that, which is pretty cool. Alright, so coming through a tunnel here. Again, I have the uh, cruise control set right now. Set it at 75. It, you know, you can fine-tune adjust it if you want to. Not really a major issue to uh, to want to use it on this route. In my opinion, it's not really needed unless you just want to be lazy like I am right now. Uh, but I have a reason to be lazy. Basically, I'm recording, drinking, and, and doing everything else at the same time. Uh, pretty close to 500 subscribers. If you guys have been watching, I'm doing a giveaway at 500 subscribers. I think I'm at 450 right now. So 50 away. I'll be releasing a video here shortly on how you can actually enter the uh, the contest and the drawing and we'll be giving away either Train Simulator 2014 or one of its DLC routes that you guys can actually choose from so look forward to that here in a little bit or so and if you even if you don't set this you can pretty much control the speed fairly easier or fairly easy I should say just using the throttle adjustments you can move back every few seconds and uh, if you do that you can get a lot closer to doing the the 90.9 without going over one thing I do like about this route is it has a bunch of these tunnels like the one coming up um, some are fairly long and if you saw that it looked like there was a texture glitch coming into this tunnel. I saw that last time as well, so I'm not sure if you guys are getting it out there or if it's just me. But uh, if you do play the route, let me know if you guys did get that glitch for any reason. Alright, just about uh, a little under two miles to go, so we'll be stopping here at our first platform. 
of many platforms if you can look at the task list right there. Again, this is the semi-fast service from Brighton to London. And what I'm going to try to do is when we get about 0.35 or 37 away from the platform, I'll go ahead and break about 80%. And that should get you stopped just in time if you do it right. If you don't, then you're going to be flying by the platform, so be careful with that. And it looks like we're coming in super, super fast, and again, we probably are, but... Go ahead and wait to 0.37 or 0.35. There we go. Let's go ahead and get break. And just put it up to about 80%. Make sure you don't go above 80% because the next notch is going to be 100% or the emergency break, and you will get deducted for points for doing that. So be careful with that. Coming in pretty fast at the station, as you can see. Hopefully we'll stop in time. Looks like a pretty good stop in my opinion, right at the end of the platform. Got the entire train on, let's go ahead and let passengers on and off. Um, also if you guys haven't subscribed, please, please, please go ahead and subscribe when you guys get a chance. Again, doing that giveaway um, here shortly and I definitely appreciate anybody who subscribes or comments on all my videos. side here. Another thing you can look at does have the passenger view here which is pretty nice. Looks pretty realistic in my opinion. Another thing that's been trending lately is the Xbox and PS4 failures. Um, I have yet to pick up either one. Uh, I do definitely want to get a PS4, maybe an Xbox, depending on if any of my friends get it or not. But I've seen a lot of uh, issues where the Blu-ray player doesn't work on the Xbox. Sounds like a, a horrible grinding noise um, when people insert it into the unit and then on PS4 of course you got the blue uh, blue line of depth that just pulsates and doesn't do anything else so I don't have any clue you know which is more common whether it's the PS4 or Xbox quite yet um, I just know that the Xbox grinding noise is pretty pretty bad if you go on YouTube and watch they have a few videos of a comp uh, I guess compilation of the grinding noises on the x -bone. Xbox One, I should say. So we're already pretty close to the next platform. It's only a mile and a half away. You can see it on the graph below. Again, I'm going to go ahead and get up to as close to 90 miles per hour as possible. If I can get to 90, then I'll definitely stop right around the 0.35 to 0.37 mark again. So that's a pretty good tip for you guys out there if you're trying to keep on the timetable in your bottom left hand corner. that's enough. I wasn't really going 90 miles per hour so I did it a, just a tad bit later than normal but I think I should be okay. Oh yeah, 
be fine. This is a much longer platform too, it looks like. There we go, right at the end of the platform. Go ahead and unload, load passengers with T on the keyboard or T as in Tom. In case my pronunciation is bad. Take a look at the back of the train there. So we're in, what is that, Burgess Hill, and we'll be heading to Hayward's Heath. Three bridges, Gatwick, and then on down to London, Victoria which I have been a few times. Anyways, if you guys are still watching, please, please let me know what you guys are playing out there. I plan to do some different videos besides Train Simulator, although I'm going to keep the Train Simulator videos going. So let me know what you guys are playing out there. I heard one person playing Kerbal Space Program which I've been playing quite a bit as well. Um, if you're playing anything else, though, let me know. I'll try to make some videos on that as well. Another thing is on the takeoff, you can go straight to 100%. You do not have to worry about the wheel slip. I think it's because we have the longer train but uh, I thought I read a comment a while back that the longer the train, the more chance for wheel slip. I'm not sure if that's true or not, if you give it too much power. Uh, but for whatever reason, the game, the longer the train, the less wheel slip. I think if this is a little bit shorter of a train, you'd probably have to adjust the throttle accordingly, not just jump it up straight to 100%. Anyways, we're pretty much a few seconds off at the arrival time as opposed to our ETA in the bottom left, but still, as long as you're within the minute, you're still on time, so we definitely want to keep it as fast as possible on all these stations, make sure we don't get any deductions as well. Do a couple train buys real fast, if I can get the right button, there we go. Mostly uh, countryside out here, as you can see. Not a whole lot of buildings or detailing throughout. One thing I did notice last time I was playing this route is there was a bunch of trampolines. I mean, it seems like every other yard had a trampoline in it. You can see through those trees right there. Do British people just like to jump on trampolines all the time? I don't know. You know, I had one when I lived in Italy, but I was probably one of the only ones in the area with the trampoline. And again, just about a little over one and a half miles to go to the next platform. We're going to use the same tank, uh, technique of 0.35 to 0.37 when braking. And it looks like we'll hit a tunnel up here as well before we get to the platform. start braking. Again, 
so far so good as far as the braking. Hopefully I don't mess it up. This one looks, looks like it's overshooting just slightly. No, that's about alright. Make sure the back end of the train gets on. Yeah, see the back end just barely got on. In fact, that's the first time that I've seen the back doors open on this platform. Anyways, I do like this route. Pretty good detailing throughout. I also like doing the scenarios with the different weather, whether it's snowing or raining. We're at Hayward's Heath, platform three it looks like. Just taking a look around. One thing I do like to do is just bring the brake down to as little as possible as well. Doesn't make a huge difference, but you can also take off a little bit quicker. You can see we're just straight on the timetable right now, which is good as well, within a second. Another game I've been playing, I've been playing a lot of uh, God of War for whatever reason on the PS3. I'm not sure why, I just kind of got a little, little itch to play that. Another game I do have, which I'm thinking about getting out, I have a railway or a train uh, simulator game for the PS3 that's imported from Japan. I have two copies of it, and I've had it for, I don't know, maybe four or five years now, because I do like to collect the, the actual video games. So I'm thinking about opening one up and, and playing it to see if it's actually worth making a video of. I'm not sure if anybody else out there on YouTube has done so yet or not, but... I may be posting some videos of that video game as well in the future. Alright, heading to three bridges right now. So far we haven't had any points deductions, which is good. I'm hoping we don't have anything on the way in. Already through quite a few stations right here. I do want to take a look at the Gatwick Airport and see what kind of modeling is around that. I'm assuming there'd be, you know, planes and runways off in the distance, but we'll find out. Gonna do a couple more train buys since we have a few minutes. Again, graphics are turned all the way up. You can see the setup and the PC specs for both PCs in the description for this video. Anyways, if you're wondering, I do live in Texas. I know I'm wearing a sweatshirt. If you're not sure if you can tell with the hoodie on it. It is actually really, really cold here in Texas. And again, really cold here and really cold where you are are probably two different things. Give it a bit more on the cruise control. See if it can get up to about 90. I don't know what the degrees is, but I'm assuming it's around 35 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit here. Again, for Texas, that's absolutely freezing. Depending on where you're from, that's probably a nice day. I don't know. It 
and we're about 30 seconds ahead of schedule right now which is good and we do have a drop down to 80 miles per hour if you look in the graph below just gonna get back in cab while we do the reduction here I do like these tunnels going through the hills, pretty nice. Zoom out a little bit on this. And we'll be going back up to 90 here shortly. Just over one and a half miles to go to three bridges where we'll be stopping again. Again, using the same technique, 0.35 to 0.37 on the graph below, we'll start breaking about 80%. And that should bring us right to the end of the platform without any issue. As long as I concentrate, we shouldn't have any issues right here. Alright, there we go. Let's go ahead and get braking now. And just leave it on 80%. Again, always to me, it seems like we're always flying into the platform we're never going to stop but trust me you will definitely stop as long as you follow that direction getting right at the end of the platform which is good to let on the passengers and let them off. And if you see me licking my lips, it's not because I'm trying to be sexy. It's because I got chaff lips right now. So don't think I'm trying to, uh, to wink at you guys or anything out there. It's not like that. Trust me. And up next is what I really want to see is Gatwick Airport. So we're pretty well into the scenario already. Still got about 29 miles to go to London, Victoria. But most of those miles will probably be around 90 miles per hour, so it should go relatively quickly. Um, one thing I do want to apologize about, I did not do the live streaming today. Uh, ended up going to a kid's birthday party with my uh, wife's niece, I believe it is, and uh, had some fun out there, something different to get out. I got a kid on the way, so I better get used to kids by now. And then my wife's actually expected, or I guess her due date is towards the end of December, so 
I'm hoping uh, my videos don't slow down, but I'm sure they will once we have the baby, especially the initial month or two. And spring the brake down to 33% to get ready to go. Put it at 100%. Let's go ahead and do just a flyby as we take off from the station here. I'm sure I did a bunch of uh, London and Brighton videos initially when I very, very first started recording, and I, I would hate to go back and watch them now because it, you know, it's probably pretty shameful compared to what I've been doing now with all the editing and and the uh, video quality on everything. Uh, but I'm definitely doing a hundred times better with stopping at the platforms now as well Whereas before I think I would stop way too early and then kind of limp my way onto the platform I'm not gonna say what I'm doing is probably the most realistic As far as the stopping goes, I think they probably come into the station around I would guess 30 to 40 kilometers maybe a little bit faster And I'm probably coming in a little bit higher than that, but uh, you know for game purposes I'm not hurting the ride quality on anything, so I don't really see the harm in it. Plus, it's having me keep on a really, really tight time schedule. So, to keep on that, I'm definitely going to break at 80%. In real life, I'd probably be a little bit more gentle on the brakes if I was the engineer. Alright, so again, let's get back in cab. Gatwick Airport platform's coming up here, just over one and a half miles. And I'll probably take a, a look on the exterior once we get there as well. Let's see if there's any planes. Well, oh, you actually got a plane coming in right there. That's pretty neat. Again, just going to break it to 0 0.35 to 0 0.37 again. And be careful on the braking just so I don't hit the 100% and get deducted any points for putting it into the emergency brake. right to the end of the platform which is good as well perfect and let's go ahead and load unload passengers again and let's take a quick look at the exterior this is what I've been waiting for hopefully it has some detailing and yeah I mean it kind of does you see the terminal here and you got the uh, got some airplanes moving in the background which is quite nice parking garage which I'm, sh I'm sure that's pretty realistic to most airports and train stations right there overall not bad definitely what I was expecting which is good I do like the modeling on the station with the numbers going and the platform signs and everything else is pretty neat taking off and landing right there. Let's go ahead and relieve the brakes just a little bit. And 
then just got two more platforms or stations to go to before London Victoria. About 26 miles to go still. Longest part of the journey. It looks like the next next station towards East Cordon. Or is it just Crodon? Alright, go ahead and get to 100% here. Let's get moving forward now. And so far it's just been a bit overcast, haven't seen any rain. No need to use our screen by any means. I feel like I got the hiccups too. It's probably this Miller Lite I'm drinking. And it's a Vortex bottle. If you can see that, I'm gonna put that up there. Looks like it has a Vortex on the bottle. I have no clue why. May makes you, you know, forces the beer down your throat more. I have no clue. I'm sure they have a reason for doing it though. The more beer they can force down your throat in a little sip, the more you'll drink, the more you'll end up buying. They gotta be making billions more because of that. Just a guess. All because of the Vortex bottle. The only thing that I hate about Miller Lite on the cans, they have that little... I don't know, you're supposed to put a key to this little hole so it can flow smoother. And yeah, it probably does flow smoother again. But it's a pain in the ass to put the key or find something around you because, you know, you may not have keys on you to punch that little hole in. I know some guy out there in college can probably just hit it with his tooth and, and drink the beer, but not me. I sit there fiddling with it for about a minute or two. All right, so just about 15 miles to go. Um, once we're up to speed, which we're pretty close to being, those 15 miles should be shaved off fairly quickly. And I believe my maximum speed or cruise control should be set still. We'll find out here in a minute. And if you look at our points, that's a bit scary. It's 666. I should have, you know, made it 667. Not saying I really believe in any of that, but uh, definitely not my luckiest number by any means. So it looks like it is limiting our speed to about 90.1, 90.2, and then bringing it back down. Which, um, unless we go beneath 89, or maybe because we're going uphill, it's hard to say. Okay, it's going back up. I'll just keep a close watch on it just in case. And we do have to get down to 80 miles per hour here shortly. Not a whole lot to see. Again, still a lot of countryside, but a lot of the platforms are well designed, especially the uh, Gatwick Airport that we just saw. speed down now.
kind of going down to the right through this tunnel right here. And we'll be back up to 90 right now. And uh, if you guys are still paying attention, I appreciate you guys watching this far into the video. I know about probably 90-95% of you don't make it this far. Not a problem. I can understand it's not for everybody. For those who stick it out through the entire scenario, hey, I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, you guys are my uh, inspiration to continue making videos. Uh, one thing I do want to ask is I've had a couple good compliments already on the Google Maps part. If you think it's a waste of time to include the Google Maps part then let me know. It does require a bit more editing but I am happy to do it if it makes my video stand out or makes it a little bit more fun to watch on your guys' end. So it looks like it is limiting our speed to 90.1, which is what I want. You know, if you're really, really trying to push everything, you can go ahead and get to about 90.9 .9 and, and kind of hold it there, but that's completely up to you. And we're already down to about 8 miles to go. So you can see doing 90 miles per hour does definitely cut down on those miles relatively quickly and I do want to ask if anybody out there is from London or Great Britain in general uh, I've always wanted to live there is there a reasonably priced place to live outside of London or not I was looking up uh, properties you know in Oxford or other towns um, that got good reviews outside of London went to about 30 to 40 minute train ride and uh, even a detached house was going for, you know, four or five hundred thousand pounds, which to me is insane. You know, I live in about a five hundred thousand dollar house, and I'm, I think my house there would probably cost three to four million pounds, which is just m mind blowing in my opinion. But if you guys do live there, let me know, you know, what a good condo or good house would cost in your area or a good area if you'd know one around London. Did a couple train buys. I do love when everything's working smoothly like it is. It's definitely a joy to see train come around the bends like that. See a train coming on the other tracks down below to the right there. Takes a lot of CPU processing to get this to run smoothly. And you can see when it loads scenery way off in the distance, it still does take a bit of a CPU hit. Going to get back in cab for a minute. Just about four and a half miles to go. We still have 666 for points. This is definitely the uh, most terrifying portion of the track here. Judging by the points, of course.
Got three and a half miles to go. We do have to get down to 60 miles per hour coming up. So I won't be able to do my quick stop like I normally do. And again, the AWS system just went off earlier. Make sure to turn those off as you head into this platform. There we go, I'm gonna go ahead and stay in cab. Make sure I don't mess anything up. down to 45 then 30 before entering the platform here entire train the platform there and we'll go ahead and load and load and load passengers to get rid of the curse of the 666 and I want to take a quick look around there's a lot of detailing here so getting close to the end we're going to be going to Clapham Junction and London Victoria next. Only about 10 miles altogether. Should go by relatively quickly. Just want to thank you guys for watching again. Those who've made it this far. Um, I will be releasing the video for the prize drawing here in the next day or two. And I still, I'm still working on the video for the studio as well where you guys can see what's around me and how I'm recording. But I'll definitely get that up here in the next couple days. Alright, so we're all ready to move forward. Let's go ahead and do so. And we're basically looking for 111 points at each station so far.
go ahead. I'm going to leave the cruise control at 90 for now and just manually adjust as needed. Hopefully I don't mess up for any reason. Passing by quite a few platforms as we come in. I'm assuming most of these platforms are used for the other scenarios. If you look in the bottom left too, where our ETA is just slightly ahead of the arrival time. I do want to apologize if I look groggy for any reason. Didn't get a whole lot of sleep. We ended up going to the uh, the bar last night with my friends, or if you're from uh, England with my mate. And uh, went to bed late, got up early, and now I'm just kind of, I think it's almost midnight here. I'm just kind of hanging on trying to make this video and then I'll go and edit it and hopefully upload it or start uploading it tonight. That way when I wake up it's already uploaded and I can edit the uh, the initial image that you guys see along with the description as well. Quite a few trains on the tracks right here. is passing by. Definitely way longer of a train than that one right there. That's what she said I guess. <laughs> Quite a bit of detailing surrounding us as well. And since I'm not in too much of a rush I'm breaking a bit earlier than normal just because I can on the timetable. about three miles ago. Another thing I've been thinking about doing is uh, doing videos on trending topics. Uh, I've been watching a lot of the Vice and Motherboard uh, documentaries. Wanted to kind of chime in on some of the future things. I think uh, one of the ones was, was it Swaylent or Soylent, however you pronounce it, which is a um, liquid product that replaces your mills and people went you know 30 45 days drinking it without any issues whatsoever other than missing the social function of eating so I wanted to try that for about two weeks straight maybe even document my experience with it only issue is it's not out and if you watch the documentary on it it had uh, or they found rats 
inside the factory where they were making it. Well, since then, um, they bought a better place or leased out a better facility to make the product in. But it's a bit scary to think that they would actually serve that to people. And I also, I believe the uh, the guy who did it for 30 days ended up having mold in one of his bags, and he had to scoop the mold out when making the drink to uh, to take the part that he wanted. So, I don't know, I really haven't put much thought or effort into it. Looks like I'm actually curving around a corner. We're going to break just for a second. Almost seems like it's curving to the right right there. Pretty neat. Like tilting to the right, I should say. But I haven't put a whole lot of thought into it. Um, I may do one or two videos, see how it works out. I think that would be more so to get my opinion out and to get views as opposed to having fun. Like right now I'm having fun. Even though making the video is a bit of a pain to go through and edit everything, at least I'm having fun doing everything. Whereas if I did something about trending topics, I think it's, it becomes more about putting yourself out there to get views in essence and I'm not sure I really want to do that at this point I don't think I would have a problem with it but uh, we'll see how it goes we may end up doing one or two videos and if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out if it does it does uh, but it's definitely not going to end what I'm doing now as far as making the train simulation videos either let's go ahead and start breaking now don't want to come in too fast Still break the bit too hard. There we go. Go ahead and let the passengers off, and we'll be heading to London, Victoria, which is only two and a half miles away. Probably talking to myself and maybe three or four other people here. You can see the other train come into the platform. It's pretty neat. A lot more buildings, as you can see around us here at this station. As we get into London here, and just look at the massive amounts of tracks. I mean, that's pretty insane, in my opinion. That's pretty neat too. You can actually see the uh, the train next to us and their passengers as well. How come I don't have any passengers? Am I the only one riding in here? And where's my tablet? I should have a tablet, a cookie, and a drink here. If you don't, you're not riding the train and in style. It's pretty neat though. You got the the uh, commuters on the platforms out there, and you can see them in the train next to you as well. All in all pretty good detailing go. Let's go ahead and get moving forward here. And I'm assuming the speed is going to be a bit different coming in to London, Victoria, which yeah, it definitely is. Let's see if that keeps me at the 45 or not, or pretty close to it. I don't think it will for some reason. As 
it keeping me down? Uh, hard to say. I don't think it is. I think it's trying to. into the, the curve. Quite a tilt right there in my opinion. It's even straightened out or not. I don't know, if it was it tilting or is it just an optical illusion on my part? Hard to say. One thing you do have to watch out for is uh, you can get bad drive quality coming up. I'm going to be going a, a little bit slower on the switch and downhill section. So I'll adjust that when the time comes. I know I got hit for I think 18 points last time I did it. definitely want to go slow on this part right here. If you're doing 40 down here and then break at the last second, you're definitely going to get hit with the bad drive quality. been back to the station since I very first started making videos for this game so it's kind of like a old reunion with my past gaming life go. We'll take a quick look at the career tab after the scenario ends. Hopefully I get the thousand points. Uh, judging by how things have been going, I'll probably get 999 just so the game can say screw you, middle-aged gamer, but we'll find out. And I was ranked 10, I think, in the career tab. Um, hopefully I get rank. well actually I won't get rank 11 because I've already done the scenario once. So I'll probably get a couple extra experience points, but nothing to get me up another rank. Go ahead and turn our headlights off now. There we 
go. You have successfully completed the journey between Brighton and London. Well done. So I did get 9.99. The game does say screw yourself. Only gained 14 experience, which is what I guess I lost that last time from not completing anything right. But as you can see, no faults, no speeding, no timeliness issues. And let's go ahead and go back into the main menu before we go. And let's look at the career tab. So yeah, I'm still ranked 10. Have a little bit of ways to go there on that. And we'll take a look at some friends here. See if anybody else has been playing. A few people on here that have been playing the game. Which is nice to see. Alright, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, again, subscribe, comment if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys on the next video.